Hey everybody, welcome to Barbecue by Biggs. I'm Aaron, and today we got the Yoder Rolling Smoke, a six pound chicken, and some beer. What are we gonna do? We're gonna put those together and stuff that beer in that butt. That's right. If you wanna see a great beer can chicken, you guys, come along with us. Stay tuned. All right, we unpackaged our bird. Now we're gonna get it out and get it seasoned. So what we did was we just took the bird out of the package and we kind of wrapped it in paper towels and put it back in the refrigerator. What that does for us is make sure that we get all the moisture that we can off of this chicken before we get it ready to put the rub on. So as long as you're dry, you can take your chicken and you can move it on over, get it ready to rub up. So now that you got your chicken out, what you want to do is just make sure that, that you got it trimmed good. If there's any hang-ons or any part of the feathers left, make sure you get those pulled off. Like this has some just some hangy fat that we're gonna pull off here. Should be good to go there. So for this chicken, we're gonna use a, a slather of mustard and we're gonna use seasoning on the top as a rub. So we're using a special PS Seasonings Brew City Beer Mustard Garlic Brown that we're gonna put as a slather. And then we have the PS Seasoning Cockadoodle Brew Beer Can Chicken Seasoning that we're gonna put on the outside. Both of these have links in the description if you guys are interested. Man, these mustards that they're putting out, this PSC seasoned mustard, it is awesome on just about everything. So we'll get this, use this as a slather, and then we'll use the uh, cockadoodle to brew as the rub on the outside. So you don't want to put too much of this mustard on there. You just want to put a little and then just start rubbing it in. You, what you don't want to do is have a bunch of it caked up underneath those legs or underneath those wings. You want to make sure you have a good, even coat on there. So what I like to do is just use a regular size spoon and then put you a spoonful on the top. And then when you flip it over, we're gonna put a spoonful on the back side as well. So make sure you get it in those cracks and crevices so that rub will stick there as well. So get it on the back side and move over. So again, just a regular size kitchen spoon. It should be plenty. We'll get that rubbed in. All right, got a good coating on it. Make sure the front's still good. Got a good coating on it. Now we'll get the rub on. Again, we're using that cockadoodle brew. It's a beer can chicken rub by PSC. Doesn't have a shaker, which is a little bit disappointing, but we can get by with it. So we're just gonna take this rub and just douse it. And then what I am gonna do is rub this thing in just to make sure we got good coverage rub on there. Get a good thick coating on there. And what we'll do, once we get into the beer stand, we'll, we'll touch it off with some more. So we got the initial rub on there. We'll get it on the stand. So we're just going to take this chicken stand. Got this chicken stand off of Amazon. Links are in the description below, but I mean it's like nine bucks or so. I'm going to put that in this foil pan. What that, it's going to do two things. It's going to keep my moisture in the pan and let it radiate up against that chicken. And it's also gonna keep my smoker a little bit cleaner with all that chicken juice dripping down. So I don't have a can of beer, so what I do, if you guys don't do this, you might, when you get a soup can, get that soup can all cleaned up and then just keep that in your barbecue drawer. That way if you don't have a can of beer and you only have a bottle, you can take that soup can, put it right there and it does the same thing. So we're using Schinerbach sea salt and lime beer to put in here. So. Again, we have it in a bottle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one little teaspoon of this rub, put it in the can, and then fill the rest up with the beer. So a lot of people may put other stuff in here, like apple juice or any of that stuff, but just so you know, guys, beer evaporates quicker than water. So beer will evaporate quicker. What that does is it creates that moisture inside of that cavity of that chicken a whole lot faster. So that's why you get so much moisture and so much juiciness on the inside of that chicken is because that beer actually comes up. Now, most people, when they take these out, it's still full. Well, a lot of the, lot of the juice from the inside of the chicken runs back into this can, so it makes it seem like all the beer is not there, but I assure you, most of the beer will be gone out of here and that'll be replaced by juices from the inside. So we'll just take our chicken, just sit it in here like this. Make sure your flaps are over. Push it down on. There you go. And what I like to do with the fronts 
is I like to spread the legs out just a little bit like this, and then just tuck my tuck my chicken wings in just like that. So you see there, we have a good coating of, of that mustard. It's wet, it's gooey on the top, which is fine. We're cooking it at 275 degrees, so it'll dry that out, and we'll have a good crust on the outside of this. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put a little bit of rub where I've kind of pushed it off, pushed this thing on, but we'll get a little bit of rub coverage here, and then we'll get it on the smoker. All right, we got it all rubbed up. We got one thing left to do, put the temperature probe down in the deep part of the breast. That way we can monitor from outside of the smoker. So this large bird, it's about six and a half pounds, gonna take close to three hours, maybe even a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is put it on for two hours before we check on it. That way it can be bathed in that smoke without being disrupted and the heat not being disrupted. This probe is gonna allow us to look at that temperature on the outside, and you know what? If it's getting done quicker than it should be getting done, we can come and check on it. So we'll get it on the smoker now. All right, we got the smoker up to 275 degrees. We're gonna get this chicken on. Now we are using B&B competition blend pellets. They're not a sponsor or anything. We just like the way that they burn, and they're only about $15 for a 40 pound bag. So that's what we're using on this cook, 275 degrees. Let's get that chicken on. So we took that top rack out to give us a little bit of space. We're gonna cook this chicken, the fire pot's over here. We're gonna cook the chicken on this side of the fire pot. It is a little bit warmer over here. So although it's set at 275 degrees, more than likely we're gonna be at about 280, 282 degrees on this side of the pit. So we'll get the chicken on. Put it right there, make sure that get it clear, get our probe in. All right, the probe is hooked up. We'll bring you guys back in in about two hours to check on it, make sure it's doing the right things, make sure the temperature is correct, and give you guys a glimpse of what this thing's gonna look at. So we'll put her to bed, we'll see you guys in about two hours. All right, we've been rolling smoke for two hours now. We're gonna look in on it and see how the color is and check this thing out. Let's do it. All right, like we said, about two hours in, rolling at 275 degrees. Oh yeah, it's looking good. The internal temperature is still only about 120 degrees, so we still got probably about an hour, hour and a half left. But color's looking nice. Let me bring you guys in to look at it. Color's looking good. Oh yeah, bird's turning out well. So now we'll just shut it up, continue at 275 degrees, look at about another hour, maybe an hour and a half. We'll, we'll check the temperature as it comes up. When this breast gets to about 162 or so, is when we'll pull this off and then it'll come up to temp from there. We will probe the thighs to make sure they're there, but usually when the breast is at about 165, the rest of it's around 170, 180 or so. So we'll check that out when we get to it. Looks like about an hour and a half. We'll put this thing back to bed and bring you guys back when it's done. All right, three hours, 45 minutes in, this bird is done. So for the last 15 minutes, we cranked it up to 325 degrees just to make sure that that skin got as crispy as we wanted it to. So let's take a look at it. It's got great color on it. That's a good looking bird. All right, let's get it off. All right, we checked the legs, we checked the thighs, all the temperatures are where they're supposed to be. We're just gonna get some tin foil, we're gonna tint this up, and then we're gonna let it rest. We'll bring you guys back for the cut and the taste. See you on a minute. All right, she is done. We're gonna cut into this and get us a taste. I'm gonna bring you guys in. All right, let's cut us a piece off of this. Let's just do the wing. Make it easy here. Oh, it just pulls apart, look at that just pulls apart and cut a piece off this breast so you can see it too. See if we can see the juice running out of that. Oh yeah. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but definitely has a lot of juice. You can look at that meat. Look at that meat right around here, you got a smoke ring on the outside. Man, let's taste this. Look at that skin on that. Oh, it looks so good. Mmm. Bite through. Man, it's so juicy. Mm. You can just look at this thing. Actually, it has a very good flavor to it, too. That rub on there, that PS seasoning rub is very delicious. You guys gotta give this a try. You know, get you some beer, get you some chicken. And you know what? 
stuff it up his butt and make you some beer can chicken. We'll catch you guys on the next cook. I'm gonna eat the rest of this. See ya.